When I write Python programs and when I have to debug and test my lines of code, I'm using the so-called Jupyter Interactive window. And in this video, I want to show you how to set it up and how to use it. Let me first show you a folder that I have created on my desktop. You can see it here and I will open it with Visual Studio Code. So I will click or press on this Explorer button where I can open the folder. Alternatively, you can also go to the File tab and open the folder from there. So the folder is on my desktop and it's called My Program. So let's click on this one and then let us select it. So the folder is opened. And now we will create our Python script. Right mouse click, new file. Let me give it a name like mypy dot and then py. You have to add the file extension because then Visual Studio Code will automatically see that this is a Python file. So now I have just opened this file. Let us write some code, okay? I will begin with a comment, which always begin, begins with a hashtag or a hash mark. So let me write here, this is some, yes, example code. Okay, then I will define a variable that contains my first name. First name is, and let me just add here a name like Denise. I will also create a variable that contains my surname and that would be Becker. Finally, I'm creating a variable that contains my age, which is 29. Okay, I have to admit I'm a bit over optimistic here. Great. Now we want to print something on the screen and particularly I want to print uh, my name is and you see I have to put this into quotation marks and then I will here add the first name and then the surname And then I will continue some text and my age uh, is, and then let us also add the age. Good. Let us have a look how this code is run. If I press on this, yeah, let's call it a play button. It's uh, basically running the Python file in the terminal. So you see the terminal is started and here you see the output. Let me close this terminal. Let me now select only one line. For example, first name is equal to Denise. And then let me press shift and enter at the same time. And then you also see that the terminal will be run again. And it starts Python, you see this here with this line. So Python has started and then it has run this first line of code. So let's see what happens if I'm selecting, let's say the next two lines of code. I'm pressing again, shift and enter, and then Python will just continue, right? And of course, I can also print. Let us select the whole line, shift and enter, and then the output is printed on the terminal. Now Python is still running, so let me just finish it by pressing Control and Set. Then you see it uh, goes back into the folder that we have selected, right? And Python is closed. So I will just kill the whole terminal and then I will close it again. And as I told you before, when I 
test and debug my code, I prefer to use the Jupyter Interactive window. So let us first set it up. You have to go to the File tab, and then you look for the Preferences. Then you will select the Settings. And in the Settings, let us write Jupyter colon send. And you will receive some suggestions uh, about uh, settings that are related to Jupyter or other settings. And you see here the suggestion Jupyter colon send selection to interactive window. And we want to check mark this setting. Okay. When you've check marked it, you just uh, close the settings again. And then let's see what happens if I select one of the lines and then I will press shift and enter again. And you will see that it opens up an interactive window and basically it shows you the same as if you would have run uh, this line here in the terminal. So basically it prints that input here into this terminal. There are a few other things that are interesting. Namely, that you can open up a variable window. So a window that shows you all the active variables. So for example here, I have created the variable first name. You see also the type of this variable, it's a string variable. You see the size of the variable, it's uh, five characters long and you also see the value. So let me also select the next two lines, shift and enter, and then you see also the next variables will show up in this variable window. So let's see the age. Let me go a little bit back here and let's have a look at the age. This variable is an integer variable, so this uh, Type basically contains a whole number and the value is 29. And the surname, it's also a string variable. It's six characters long and the value is Becker. Cool. Let us also print. Let us also run that. And you see. Uh, both the input, let me close this variable window now. So you see both the input is printed and then also the output that normally appears in the terminal when you run this Python file. Whenever you make any error, then it will also appear in this interactive window. So for example, let me just take away one of these quotation marks then I hope to generate an error and you see it represents that there is a syntax error. Compared to the terminal which also would uh, provide you this error message but compared to the terminal you see there are some colors here that um, guide you better through this error message. Great! What else can you do in this interactive window? You can, of course, write some expressions here directly into that um, little field. Let me just first correct my error. Okay. For example, if you have run all that code here, right? Uh, as you see, I have run three lines of code. It basically shows me only the first line, right? And now I could actually look what is the value of surname. So I can just write surname and you have to press shift and enter again. Okay. And then basically it, as an output, it shows you the variable. It's very convenient to have this field where you can uh, type some code while you are debugging your code. For example, what you could do, you could also write here, type and then age. 
and you would see what type this variable is. Nice. Let me close the interactive window. Okay, so whenever you run that code, it will come up again. And since I have closed it, it will always start again. If you want to restart this interactive window after you have run uh, a couple of lines of code, you can always do this by pressing on that button, which restarts the Jupyter kernel. Right? It will ask you if you are sure to do this. So let us click yes. And you can always clear this interactive uh, window, or this means delete all the messages that appear in it by pressing on this little cross here. So this is the interactive window, or let me call it the Jupyter interactive window. The advantages are that you have nice colors, that you can type some lines of code here to check, for example, the types or the lengths or the sizes of different variables. And you have this variable window where you can check what variables you have defined. So I am using this regularly. And if you like it, then you know how to set it up. File, preferences, settings, and find Jupyter colon send selection to interactive window. The advantages are that you have nice colors, that you can type some lines of code here to check, for example, the types or the lengths or the sizes of different variables. And you have this variable window where you can check what variables you have defined. So I am using this regularly. And if you like it, then you know how to set it up. File, preferences, settings, and find Jupyter colon send selection to interactive window.